Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education. And today, we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 20, Questions 54 to 56. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at some genetics. I know quite a lot of students would have trouble with this unit, mainly because um, genetics can get a bit hairy when they start including words like cis dihybrid, tri trans dihybrid, what's recombination, what's a loci, what's a chromatid chromosome. So there's a lot of factors, a lot of prerequisite knowledge that you need uh, to have under your belt to, before you attack this. That's why it is difficult. But in saying that, we can definitely work through this systematically if we can get through the answer. So before we dive into drawing Punnett squares, let's just uh, orientate ourselves and understand what the stimulus is telling us. So I think the big, the big flaw here is what, what tricks a lot of students is that ACE have done this on purpose. So we have here our two, let's say, chromatids. So for our chromosome, remember two chromatids make a chromosome. or Because you do see sometimes in books like, ah, oh, chromosome. Uh, they say this is a chromosome, this is a chromosome, but you, generally what they mean is this is a chromatid, this is a chromatid. So these are homologues of each other of the same chromosome. So that's one thing to understand. So we've got a... ASA says that our red and brown can be represented as... So red is RD and brown is BW, but that's confusing. If you're going to draw the Punnett squares, it's going to get too big and it's confusing. That's why I think what you should do is you should probably... Um, uh, uh, simplify it to just R and B. If you have, say, big R is our dominant and little r is our recessive, big B is our dominant and little b is our recessive for brown and red, um, <clears throat> I would leave it that way. So we're told that if you have a dominant red, so a, so a species is going to show red eyes if it has a dominant red only. Um, a species is going to show brown eyes if it has a dominant brown only. However, if you have dominant red and brown, you're going to get maroon. Also, Y pigments, the homologues are always recessive, so it's not going to be any, any color. So let's just, I'll just go through a quick example here. So we've got our maroon. So in, in the uh, figure 1A given to us in a stimulus, it says maroon. So let me just write it in a way um, that's easier to understand. Instead of writing R, D, B, W, let's just do big R, little b, little r, big B. It's just easier to read. We're told as well that the um, in the last dot point of the first part of the stimulus, both brown and red are found on chromosome 2. So make sure you understand that for each chromosome, so let's say the, the chromatid here with the homologue, so each homologue, we've got a red and a brown. That's important to note. So when we're going to be crossing over or we're going to be doing crosses for Punnett squares, you're going to have a male is going to have a, so one homolog, two homolog. You're going to cross it with a female that's going to have one and two homologs. So keep that in mind. So we're told that this is a trans dihybrid. So, oh, mouse is low. Hopefully I can finish this before the, the mouse fairy doesn't die. Um, we're told this is a trans dihybrid. So if this is trans, recall in, say, chemistry, if it's trans on opposite sides, if it's going to be a cis dihybrid, so this is going to come in handy, obviously, for question 54. So cis dihybrid just means they're going to be on the same side. So big R, little, uh, big R, big B on the same side. Little R, little B on the same side. So that's cis dihybrid. So keep that in mind. So when they say as well for question 54, di homozygous rex. So remember, homozygous means you have the same allele for each. So if we're going to say it's homozygous, but it's red-eyed, that means we have to have two big R's. So if it's homozygous, red-eyed, we have to have two big R's because if we don't have a big R, then we can't have red eyes. But because it's homozygous, that means we have to have them both as big. If we had big R, little R, it'd still be a homozygous, it'd still be, sorry, red-eyed, but that's heterozygous red-eyed. We want homozygous red-eyed. And remember what we said, if you have a dominant brown allele, that means it's going to come out as a maroon color. But we don't want a maroon color, we want red. So therefore, you have to have it as a recessive. So you have to have, obviously, homozygous recessive brown, because that means, it's if, if you recall, 
if we, when we cross and we have both homologs that are recessive, it's going to be a white pigment that doesn't have color. So this is what, so RB, RB, so homolog one, homolog two for male. This is what we mean when we say it's a um, dihomozygous red. So this is what we mean when we say it's cis dihybrid. So keep that in mind. The last important piece of information we need to understand is that in question 54, it talks about recombination and the 50% recombination. The good thing is, we says in the unit stimulus that um, men don't cross over, it's only the female. Um, so it says that uh, crossing over only occurs in the females, not in the, in the males, which means if we're going to get 50% recombination uh, in females, it's pretty much a swap. So recombination means just crossing over, just swapping. So we're going to get cross here and cross here. So 50% recombination means we're going to have a bigger, oh, sorry. We're going to, um, uh, we're, we're going to cross not like that. So the crossing over is going to be, well, if we've got big R, big B, little R, little B, we're going to have big R, little B, big B, little R. So that's what we mean by 50% recombination. It's just crossing over, it's 50%. So you're 50% likely to have this and 50% likely to have that. So that's what it's just telling us. So we're going to have these sort of crosses. So, I mean, that also means you can draw um, both Punnett squares for this recombination and this recombination, but you're going to get the same answer. So um, it doesn't matter if you do the uh, if you do the cross for question 54 with this these homologs or these homologs, same answer. I mean, we can do them. I can show you it's going to be the same answer. Um, but just know that in the exam, if you want to save time, you should know that 50% mean is going to be equal. So let's just jump into question 54. Clear the screen so we can start again. It says dihomozygous red-eyed males. Remember what we said? So dihomozygous red-eyed is going to be RB, RB. So if we draw the, uh, the uh, chromosome, so this is for male. It's going to be R, big R, little b, big R, little b. And female. We have a cis dihybrid. So remember, we said cis dihybrid is going to be so female. So it's going to be so cis dihybrid is going to be our bigger big B, little r, little b. However, it says it's 50% recombination, which means we could also have, which what we discussed, our big R, little b, and our uh, little r, big b. But you can see anyway, if we're going to cross them, because we still have our big R and our big b, it's going to be equal. But I'll show you, we can have the proof of concept anyway. So let's just draw the Punnett square. So how about we draw it for the first, let's just do it for the first, um, the first cross, where there's no recombination. So remember, we're going to cross homolog 1 and homolog 2 of male to homolog 1 and homolog 2 of female. So we're going to end up with RB, RB for male. And we're going to cross that with our, so we've got here, let's do the first one, our big R, big B, and our little r, little b for our female. So let's just do that one first. So I might actually clear this screen. Um, where's our toolbar? Just so I can clean that up a bit. Let's do the next one. So we can see now if we cross it, we're going to have bigger, bigger. So big B, little b. We're going to have bigger, bigger, big B, little b. We're going to have Big R, little R, B, B. We're going to have our big R, little R, uh, sorry. Uh, yep, big R, little R, uh, B, B. So recall, if we're going to have a big R and big B, it's going to be maroon. So if we draw a little square here, so the, this square is going to be maroon color. This square, big R, big B, maroon color. This side only has a big R and everything's 
a um, recessive, so it's going to be red. This side has a big R and everything's recessive, so it's going to be red. So we know, therefore, we're going to have our, um, it, when it says question 54, what expected eye color proportions are the progeny? So you know you're going to have um, equal proportions, so 50% maroon and 50% red. So the answer for 54 is going to be D, but remember, the question says 50% recombination between the brown and red loci. So if we're going to have a 50% recombination, we can also cross, so remember we've got RB male, RB male, we can also cross with the female, the recombinant form. So we did this form, but where there's also recombination for the female, which means we can also have big R, little b, little r, big b. But you'll see that because it's, I guess, the same, because it's 50% um, change and you're still having the uh, dominant R and B, it's going to be exactly the same. So if we do, so this is male, so I might as well draw male and female. So you can see that it's going to be big R, big R, little b, big R, big R, little b. It's going to be big R, little r, big b, little b, big R, little r, big b, little b. And you can see the proportions if we draw the proportions. So that's going to be red, red, because there's um, dominant R's and little b's. And over here, we've got dominant red and dominant brown. So it's going to be maroon and maroon. So you can see, therefore, even if we do the, so 50% maroon, 50% red, even if we do the um, recombination, we get the same uh, proportions of progeny. So it's going to be 50% maroon and 50% red-eyed. Now, it, it, Acer did this on purpose um, to see who was switched on. D just don't assume that, oh, I'm just going to do this cross here and then guess and say, okay, it's 50% maroon and 50% um, red. They could have been uh, sneaky and said 25% recombination or 75% recombination. So the reason why this answer came out equal is because it was only 50%. So we just swapped them natural is just a like for like swap but if they just said 25 percent recombination or 75 percent recombination you would have achieved different answers so keep that in mind when they talk about 50 percent recombination and just a swapping over so that's how you do 54 now 55 so 55 um it's kind of uh, it goes on from 54 again uh, if you know how to do 54 you should be able to do 55 in a breeze, like a click of a finger, it says, if a trans dihybrid male is crossed with a white eyed female, what eye colors can the progeny have? So, trans dihybrid male. So, remember, trans dihybrid male means we have our trans dihybrid male. So, we've got, let's say, our um, bigger, little b, our little r. Big B, so that's going to be our trans dihybrid male, and our female is going to be white eyed. Um, so I mean, you're just crossing over figure one A and one B, pretty much. So um, they've kind of. <laughs> why am I looking at this? Because I'm just struggling trying to think. Hmm, what do I do? So you're just crossing over figure one A and one B. Um, but let's just draw it anyway. So you've got female is going to be our R B. Uh, B, so that's our white. So let's cross them over. So remember, we've got homolog one, homolog two of male, crossed over of homolog one, homolog two of female. So it's going to be, if we do the male, R, B, R, B, K, with our, uh, oops, sorry, ignore this, with our uh, female, it's going to be little la little b little la little b and you can see straight away that it's going to be bigger little la b b so little b big b um so little la sorry little la little la big b little b so you can see straight away that it's going to be big r yep and r r big b so you can see that it's going to be 
red, red, brown, brown. So the proportion, so red, red, brown, brown, so 50% red and 50% brown. So you're going to have red and brown only. So 55 has to be C. So the good thing here is that um, if you do well in 55, now if we look at 56, we can get the answer straight away because we've done all the hard work in 54 and 55. So if we take a look at 56, I might just leave this up for a second and just bring out my toolbar. Just cross this out here. The question is asking brown eyed phenotypes. So to have brown eyes, remember what we said. To have brown eyes, it must have a dominant B. So there must be a dominant B in there for it to be brown eyed. So if it says it must be, uh, so if we take a look at the options, let's start off with say D. It says it can be either homozygous or heterozygous for red. So if it was homozygous for red, that means you could have a big R, big R, and let's say you've got a big B, little b, but that means you're going to get maroon. So you can't have a brown eye phenotype, obviously, with a big R. So 56D is incorrect. It says it can either be homozygous or heterozygous for brown. Now, that's not true, because if it's homozygous for brown, so it can be two little b's, and that means it can be white. If you have two little b's, so let's say if you do two little r's, two little b's, that's, that's a white color. If you have a big R, so if it was, let's say, um, if you had a heterozygous red, it'd be red. So that's why C is incorrect. So B says must be homozygous for the brown, so the BW allele. That's not true because if it's homozygous little Bs, it's going to be a white color. So let's say, for example, RRBB would be a white color. So it can't be that. Finally, A, which is the correct answer, that's why I went from D up. A says, must be homozygous for the red allele. That's true. Because if, if it's homozygous for red allele, that means you're going to have, let's say, B little r with a, it could be small b little r, or it could be big B, big B. So you can see, if it's homozygous for red, that means it's not going to, because to get the red color, it has to be a dominant so a dominant um, uh, heterozygous or a dominant homozygous. It can't be a recessive homozygous red to express red color. That's why it's going to express brown. So you can kind of see it from the punish that we drew here and we drew beforehand that you can see that even if you have, if you have two recessive reds here, it's going to be a brown color. Two recessive is going to be a brown color. So it kind of gives you the answer there. So the answer for 56 has to be A because of this. Now, um, this was a lot to digest for this unit. But a lot of it, uh, the, the best way to obviously answer these sorts of questions in the GAMSAT is to uh, upskill, familiarize yourself with genetics, familiarize yourself with what is a chromatid, chromosome, homologs, how do you do Punnett squares, um, how to obviously read, comprehend what the information is telling you, but a lot of this does require prior knowledge. But if you're still having difficulty with this unit and you'd want uh, further clarification, you can post your queries in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.